the transformer and power transmission. So a transformer consists of an iron core, as you can see here, and we have two types of windings. There is a primary winding where we have the input. This is connected to an AC source and a secondary winding, which is our output. This is connected to our load. For example, this could be a resistive load. Now you can see that there's, there will be a magnetic flux flowing in this iron, uh, iron core uh, due to the uh, magnetic field created by this current uh, and the flux that flows uh, in this magnetic circuit will be a constant provided that we neglect any uh, losses in the uh, circuit. Now using Faraday's law uh, delta V1, the voltage that we apply between the terminals of the primary coil, the input, uh, will be equal to minus N1, the number of windings in the primary, d phi b dt, the rate of change of the uh, magnetic flux. And similarly, on the secondary side, we will have, using Faraday's law, delta V2, the potential difference appearing between the uh, terminals of the resistor will be minus N2, the n n number of windings in the secondary coil, uh, d phi b dt. Since the flux through the two coils is the same, there's a single flux flowing in the circuit, uh, we have delta v1 over n1 equals minus d phi b dt, which is also delta v2 over n2 equals minus d phi b dt. So delta v1 over n1 equals delta v2 over n2, and delta v2 is n2 over n1 delta v1. So if N2 is greater than N1, you can see that delta V2 will be larger than delta V1. This would be called a step-up transformer. If N2 is less than N1, delta V2 would be less. This would be called a step-down transformer. And at the same time, you can see that this is a ground isolator. So we have the ground of this circuit being different from the ground of this circuit. Uh, in an ideal transformer with no power losses, the input power uh, we have I1 times delta V1, that is input into this coil, we're neglecting the coil resistance, will be equal to I2 times delta V2, the output uh, power. So no power losses, then we have input power equals output power. So uh, I1 delta V1 equals I2 delta V2, but at the same time, I2 is delta V2 divided by the load resistance due to Ohm's law. So uh, we can say that I1 delta V1 will be equal to I2, which is delta V2 over RL times delta V2. So I1 delta V1 equals delta V2 square over RL. Now, let's say that we have uh, an equivalent resistance seen by this AC source and we call that R equivalent. So delta V, I, instead of I1, we write delta V1 over R equivalent. Delta V1 square over R equivalent is delta V2 square over R2. So R equivalent becomes a R, a R load, R load times delta V1 over delta V2 square, but delta V1 over delta V2 is N1 over N2, so this would be N1 over N2 squared, parentheses squared. So the equivalent resistance seen by the primary coil is the load resistance multiplied by the ratio of the number of turns in the primary coil to the secondary coil squared. So, <clears throat> uh, the equivalent resistance, R equivalent, is the load resistance when viewed from the primary. So this is our AC circuit. This has a resistance here that is the equal, equivalent resistance uh, seen by the uh, primary coil. And that is calculated uh, uh, by knowing the number of windings in the primary and secondary coils and the load resistance as I have uh, shown. So to get maximum transfer to our load, N1 and N2 can be tuned to achieve what we call impedance matching. So we're going to talk about this in more detail in the next video. So the transformer is a great tool uh, to tune the resistance seen by the AC source in order to get maximum transfer, maximum power transfer via impedance uh, matching. So we will talk about this. 
Okay, <clears throat> let's see uh, an example, the economics of AC power. An electricity generating station needs to deliver energy at a rate of 20 megawatts to a city one kilometers away. A common voltage for commercial power generators is 22 kilovolts, but a step-up transformer is used to boost the voltage to 230 kilovolts before transmission. Part A, if the resistance of the wires is 2 ohms and the energy costs are about 11 cents per kilowatts hour, estimate the cost of the energy converted to the internal energy in the wires during one day. That's the energy wasted. And part B, now repeat this calculation for the situation in which the power plant delivers the energy at its original voltage of 22 kilovolts without a step-up transformer. Now, uh, we want to deliver a power of uh, 20 megawatts. We have the primary AC source voltage, 22 kilovolts. We're going to connect it to a step-up uh, transformer in order to obtain the voltage in the secondary, uh, 230 kilovolts okay um, and the resistance of the wire was 2 ohms so in part a we have wire resistance equals 2 ohms and it costs 11 cents per kilowatt hour uh, energy lost this is basically energy lost in one day is our uh, question so the power that is being transmitted to the city is 20 megawatts the power transmitted to the city this is our average power 20 megawatts so here is the circuit. We have 22 kilovolts primary AC source connected to a step-up transformer. We obtain 230 kilovolts at the output. And then we have resistance of the wire that takes this uh, power to the city. And the city has a load resistance. Now, the input power by the AC source must be equal to the output power. We're assuming an ideal transformer so for an ideal transformer this is going to be equal to 20 megawatts input and output powers so this 20 megawatts uh, will be equal to the RMS current squared times the wire resistance plus the load resistance uh, which will be equal to uh, the voltage in the secondary times IRMS, uh, this is basically purely resistive load. So we don't have a power factor. Cosine phi is equal to 1. So with that, the RMS current is basically uh, 20 megawatts. 20 times 10 to 6 watts divided by 230 kilovolts. So this will give us 87 amperes. And how much is the power wasted in one day? The average power is IRMS squared times R. This is the power wasted. This is 87 squared multiplied by 2 ohms. This will be 15 kilowatts. And in one day, we have 15 kilowatts times 24 hours, 360 kilowatts hours uh, energy wasted. This goes to the internal energy of the wire. And what is the cost of this loss? It is 360 kilowatts hour multiplied with 0.11 uh, dollars, 0.11 cents, 
a point eleven uh, dollars or eleven cents. This corresponds to forty dollars of uh, cost that we have to pay. Uh, now in part B, we're going to deliver it directly to the city without a transformer. No transformer. Uh, then the RMS current will change. It's going to be 20 megawatts divided by 22 kilovolts. So 20 megawatts divided by 22 kilovolts. This will give us instead of 87 amps, 909 amps. And then the power uh, lost in the resistor of the resistor of the coil, resistance of the coil is 909 square times 2 which is 1.7 megawatts or 1700 kilowatts. So how much energy do we waste? In one day, we're going to have 1700 kilowatts times 24 hours, four times 10 to four kilowatts hour energy wasted. And what is the cost of this waste? The cost is 4 times 10 to 4 times 0.11 dollars per kilowatt hour. That is 4,400 dollars. Now you can see that using the transformer was a great uh, decision. Okay. So in this lecture, we have talked about the transformer and power transmission. The transformer consists of an iron core on which we have a primary winding connected to an AC source and the secondary winding connected to a load. The flux is the same. For an ideal transformer, there should be no power loss. I1 delta V1 equals I2 delta V2, assuming no capacitors or inductors here. Uh, so we have no power loss. And the constant flux also dictates that the ratio of the voltages is determined by the ratio of the number of windings. If you have more windings in the secondary, it's a step-up transformer, less windings in the secondary. Compared to the primary, we have a step-down transformer. And uh, we can calculate the equivalent resistance seen by the primary, the input side, uh, by considering the uh, power relationship I1 delta V1 equals I2 delta V2 where the current is replaced by voltage divided by resistance and this gives us the equivalent resistance so we can see that by playing with N1 and N2 we can change the value of the equivalent resistance. Uh, when the equivalent resistance is uh, going to match the resistance of the AC source for example we will have impedance matching and we will have maximum power transfer so this will we'll talk about in the next lecture there's a maximum power transfer theorem then we talked about the economics of AC power transmission uh, in order to deliver energy at a rate of 20 megawatts to a city using an AC source of 22 kilovolts, we introduce a step-up transformer to uh, which steps up the voltage to 230 kilovolts. And we see that because there is a resistance in the wire that transmits the power to the city, which is one kilometers away, that's two ohms resistance, uh, we waste some energy here. And the energy that we waste is uh, determined by the current that flows in the secondary uh, coil and this that current is determined by uh, basically the power that we are delivering divided by the voltage of the secondary uh, part and that's 230 kilowatts so 87 amps is the current i rms squared times r is the power uh, that is consumed in this resistor uh, in order to convert it to internal energy and that gives us a uh, $40 cost because this corresponds to 15 kilowatts in one day 360 kilowatts per hour a kilowatt hour energy and one kilowatt hour energy lost costs 11 cents and without this transformer we deliver 20 megawatts to the city using this 22 kilowatts uh, source 
uh, the current becomes 909 amps now because we don't we didn't step up the voltage and with that the power wasted is 1700 kilowatts so this would be directly connected to this r and r load so this part would be uh, disappearing and with that we will have in one day four times 10 to 4 kilowatts hour energy wasted which corresponds to a cost of 4400 instead of 40 dollars so you can see that it was a great decision to introduce this step up transformer.